Okay, so let's talk about retouching old photos. You're going to be using the same tools that you used in your previous retouching assignment. And of course, if it is a raw photo, as in you didn't scan it and you took a photo of it instead, you can open it in Camera Raw and apply global edits such as white balance, exposure, and contrast and such. And of course, we want to analyze the image. The big issues are definitely going to be these scratches, this missing area, and maybe taking care of some of these edges. You should have already watched the video on using a level adjustment layer to fix color and applied that to the other photo I provided you for class. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and duplicate our background. I'm going to hit Command J to do this, and I'm going to start doing my retouching on this layer. So I'm going to rename this Retouching. And I'm just going to start off with my tools, with my Spot Heal tool, and start working on all of these different scratches and little specks. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in using Command Plus a couple times. All of these little dots and specks all over the place. I'm going to start off up here in the corner. and work my way around. So I'm going to speed up the video. This part is going to take you quite a bit. Now remember, when you get to these larger areas, it's best to try to um, take care of these little specks first around it so that when you try to take care of this big crack here, it will pull from an area that doesn't have issues already. And remember, I'm also using the hand tool. So when I need to move, I can hold down the space bar. It turns into the hand tool. I can click and drag to where I need to go. And here, I want you guys to notice that here is a thumbprint. So the oils in your hands, if you remember from the scanning lecture, the oils in your hands will start with time to deteriorate a photo. So here is a perfect example of a thumbprint on the side of a photo. So I got to this section right here, and whenever I try to um, use the spot healing tool, it's actually just a, replacing it with more of this white speckly stuff. So this would be a time um, where I can go back in and use some of the other tools. Right now, I'm just going to focus on spot healing for now and then come back to the larger areas later. Okay, so here's an area that I just tried to retouch and it pulled from this big crack. So that's what I'm talking about. You got to be careful with this. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo and just do a little section at a time instead. Again, it happened. Command Z undo. And if while you're doing this, you want to try it using some of the other tools, you're more than welcome to. Um, like I said, right now, I'm just still using the spot healing tool to just get as much as this little gunk as possible.
Now every once in a while, when it feels like you've been working forever and nothing's happened, I like to zoom out and turn off my layer every once in a while so I feel a little bit better that I've actually been doing something. <laughs> it's looking better. So I want to remind you to save as you go, just in case your computer shuts down. You don't want to uh, lose all the hard work you've done. So make sure that you go to save every once in a while. And oh, I, this is actually a tip, so I don't want to save it like that. I'm going to hit cancel. I want to save it with my layer, so I'm going to go to save as, and I'm going to go ahead and put my name in front of here and I'm going to change this to Photoshop instead so I keep all of my layers so I'm going to hit save and hit OK now every time I go to save I can just go ahead and hit save and well I haven't done anything so it's grayed out <laughs> but let me go ahead and do a couple things but now every time that I go up here to save, it'll just automatically save as my PSD file. I don't have to worry about doing save as again. So yeah, hit, uh, go to save every once in a while so if something happens, you don't lose all of this work. I know there's a lot of spots in here, but if you're having problems figuring out what to tackle first, go with what I call the brightest stars in the sky. <laughs> Whatever is that's sticking out and the most distracting, hit those first and then go for the smaller um, dots. And talking about the dots still, I haven't even tackled the huge tears yet. We're just trying to get as much of this out as possible so that when we do go to fix these tears, it's pulling from clean-ish spaces instead of just adding more junk for us to retouch out. So I've done that. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working on these larger problems. Now this is a point where you might want to go ahead and hit Command S to save or go up to File and Save. And you may want to go ahead and uh, make another copy of your retouching layer just so that, like I said, if you do make a huge issue and don't realize it till later, especially when we're really close, sometimes if we fix something we don't realize that it's a really part important part of the photo and then we zoom out and realize that it looks really bad. So that's another reason to keep another layer going. So I'm going to hit Command J on this layer and I'm going to go ahead and put retouching um, cracks, I guess. Let's go retouching cracks. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start with my spot healing brush. Um, and we'll see if I need to run to switch brushes in a little bit or switch to a different tool on a specific area. So I'm going to go and I'm going to just take these areas piece by piece. If you try doing the whole thing at once, sometimes it works, but sometimes it'll pick up weird stuff. Okay. 
Okay, and you can see there's kind of like this weird look, look right here. So I'm going to try that again. That looks better. And it's just copying more of a crack from somewhere else on that part. So that's not working very well. Okay, that's a little better. All right, and let's see. I'm going to go ahead and come over here to this thumb area. We had a couple of thumbprints, I think, right? Yeah, there's another one down here. Why don't we try? I'm going to try the patch tool on this one down here. So I'm going to bring up my patch tool. I'm going to do, again, little areas at a time. I'm going to take this area right here and ask it to cover it with this. And it looks like it did a pretty good job. Let's do another area right here. And you want to stick close to these areas because as you know there's areas that have faded the the light is fading off and such and so you want to try to match it up as best as possible all right i'm going to hit command d to deselect we grab this and pull it down this way this time command d to deselect and let's see i'm going to try doing this area click and drag down command d to deselect and if you miss a little area, you can hold down shift or and circle it some more or click away and redo it. All right, not too bad. Now, if we would have tried doing that without all of the retouching done, then um, it would have picked up a bunch of extra crud and would have made it a lot harder. So that's a reason not to do that. Now, before I go ahead and speed up the video again, um, let's see, some other tools like is the clone stamp that you can do. So I just healed this part, but it has like this weird grayish look to it. So, well, we have two stampish tools, right? We have the healing brush tool, which is another tool that you can use it where you tell it where to heal from. So I can hold down the Alt Option key click over here to the side and then click here and tell it to heal with that and that did a pretty good job here's another little area let's try the stamp tool with that one so I'm bring the stamp tool I want it to heal from the area above it so I need to hold down the alt option key click once to tell it where to heal from then come down here and start alright nice and start brushing away now with uh, remember with those two you have to be really careful about where you're selecting to where it's healing from or cloning from because if you start you know like let's say I wanted to I took this part let me go ahead and do an option holding an option I click here and I want I accidentally include that if I then brush there then now I have another one and now I have another one and now I have another one and that looks really bad so you don't want to do that all right, I'm going to take a step back here. Okay, I'm going to start uh, working on these cracks, and I'll pause if I have any more good tips for you.
Okay, so um, there's this little spot here, and it's not a huge spot, but it is noticeable on her lip. And no matter what I do, it keeps trying to pull the areas around here to uh, fill it in when I know it should be darker. So this is a perfect time to use that stamp tool. Let's get in close. Use the Alt Option key to pick where it's going to stamp from. I'm going to pick a dark area over here and just very slightly go in there. And that's looking better. Okay, so now I've gotten to a place where the regular tools aren't really helping much more. And if you're noticing, this is going to be in the places where there is a heavy difference. So for instance, here between the dark and the light areas. And then up here um, where, you know, it's not just skin texture, background sketch texture, it's her eyes and such. Here's her hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another technique where you basically make a selection and then use that in place of what's there. So um, you can also try this with the stamp tool. It's basically like using the stamp tool, but the way I'm gonna show you, you have more control because it's on its own layer. So let's start with this little piece of hair right here. I'm gonna get my lasso tool up And I'm going to select an area right by it. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to hold down shift to add to the selection. And this is kind of like when you guys replace the eyes on that guy. I'm going to go ahead and go right click, layer via copy. Now I have a layer of just that little piece of hair. I'm going to name that hair on left. Okay, and now if I hit my move tool, I can now take that piece and move it down. Now the nice thing about this is that if it doesn't exactly line up, you can actually transform your selection. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to, let's do free transform. And if I hit this little um, button up here, it's a warp tool. So it gives you a little bit more options to be able to move just a little pieces at a time so you can see I have like a little handle here and I can move this over to where I think it is correct. I can hit the check sign and there it is. And now it does look like there's a little bit of a blobby dark area right there. So I'm going to add a mask. I'm going to get my brush tool up. I'm going to come just around the edge here just to soften that edge up. All right, not too shabby. So I'm going to continue doing this on all of these very difficult areas. <clears throat> all right, so if you get this message, could not make a new layer from the selection because the selected area is empty, it's because you're on the wrong layer. There's nothing, um, if you were, if you had stayed on this layer here, then that means that there's nothing for it to copy. So I just have to hit okay. 
select the layer right here that I want to copy from. Now go ahead and go right click layer via copy. And now there's another layer there. And this is going to be left hairline. I'm going to switch to my move tool, click uh, by pressing V and then click and drag this area over. And it looks like I should have grabbed a little bit more skin here. I can try going up here and let's go ahead and um, do a free transform, get the warp. And let's move this out this way a bit. Let's see if that helps or if I just need to make a new selection. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna hit okay. And oh, that bottom area doesn't look that great. Let's go back and do this again. And paying attention to that bottom edge, moving it back. Okay, that's looking better. All right, let's give this uh, a layer mask. Bring up my brush by hitting B. And just soften that edge so it's not so obvious. Okay, so if you noticed, I was using the clone stamp tool and I ended up clone stamping this pattern over and over again. So that's one of the issues with the clone stamp tool is if you're not careful, this could happen. So there was the original little curl thing that was there. So when did I start? Okay, so that's where the issue began. So I need to find somewhere else to stamp from instead of there so that I don't end up having this repeated look. All right, much better. Now there is a little bit of repeatability happening right here, but it's not nearly, I think, as noticeable as when it was that because the front of her hair is all going like one direction. It doesn't look too noticeable. All right, so I've done everything else that I put off the hardest part for last um, because this is where it gets really tricky. Um, once you start getting into people's facial expressions, you got to get it pretty much right on uh, for it to look like the person still. So I'm going to try uh, using my stamp tool quite a bit and then my other, uh, I might have to use part of this eyeball for over here. I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to start getting in there. And remember, that's one of the good things about doing stuff on another layer is that if you mess up, 
it's okay. You can step back. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, another layer, another copy of this one. And because it's underneath all of these other ones, uh, everything on top of here is still fine. It's still going to show up as it was before. I'm going to do this. I'm going to name this one Retouching Face. So if I mess up big time, I can take a step backwards to where I was before. So remember, um, when you're doing this, you got to kind of start thinking like a painter. Um, you're painting in areas, but instead of getting a color, you're getting basically other areas that you're painting with. So if I want to retouch right here, I don't want to be pulling from over here. It's way darker than over here. It's just something to think about as you go along um, with this, especially with the clone stamp tool which I'm not on. Okay, getting closer. So I'm going to go ahead and try to grab uh, this portion of the eye. I'm going to flip it and try to cover this part up with it. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so to flip it, I'm going to come up here to edit. I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to flip horizontal. And now I'm going to hit V for my move tool. And I'm going to change this opacity. Okay, now let's get up here to edit. Let's go ahead and try the free transform. Pull this here. I'm trying to match up the iris, the circle area. And let's see, will it let me do it from here? No. Oh, it will. Let's see. Okay. Looks like I need to move it just a bit. Okay, let's give this a go and see how it works out. Add our layer mask, bring up B to mask away, and I really don't need all this stuff. In fact, it's going to make it worse because her eye is different. Shade over there. Okay, and it looks like my iris is a little bit off. It's like, it's kind of hard to tell from the damage of the photo though. Okay, it looks like I need to turn it a little bit more.
Okay, not looking good. Let's see. It's getting closer though. Clean up some of this here. Oops. And the big issue is just the brightness. It's way too bright. So, let's see. Let's take that back out. And I'm going to bring up, let's try, uh, I'm just going to do a simple exposure adjustment layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the side here. And when, I want to make sure that it's right above the layer I'm working on, it should have come up because I had this layer selected. Then when I clicked the adjustment layer, it popped it above this one. So with the adjustment layer right above the layer you're working on that you want only this adjustment to be affecting, you right click and go to create clipping mask. Now there's this little tiny arrow here and now that means that it's only gonna be working on this. So now I can take the exposure down and it's only affecting that area. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that's looking pretty close. Not bad, actually. Okay, you can see there's some mask issues. there's going to be where it works. Okay. Whew. That one was rough. <laughs> and I noticed right now too that this line doesn't look all that great either. So let's go back here. Soften that out. That looks better. Okay. Now we just have this area here. This is going to be kind of rough as well. Uh, let's see. Because it's not really the same side that we're seeing over here. But we might be able to get some of this to work for us. So let's go ahead and grab a piece over here. I'll grab a pretty big chunk. And right click. Layer via copy. I'm going to go ahead and flip this by going to Edit, Transform, Flip, Horizontal. Okay, then, whoops. Then I'm going to switch to my Move tool by hitting, hitting B. Okay. And it's really just like some texture-ish type stuff. So I'm going to put that there. Let's uh, pull down the opacity for a second. Okay, so it's just right there. So let me bring up, uh, add a layer mask to it. And let's layer mask away all of this other stuff. Okay, let's see. Oops. Remember to turn on your layer mask to see where you're going. It's just the backslash button. Okay, backslash again, turn it off. I'm going to take the opacity back up on this. And that looks eh, looks eh, is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and move this back up here a little bit. And I'm going to uh, pull my brush back up. I'm going to actually fill it in a little bit right here. Okay, then I'm going to switch back to black and just go against this very slightly here. And there we go. Let's see, how's that looking? Oh, looks great. Okay, that was a really long journey, wasn't it? 
So last couple things. Um, I'm going to take care of this. Let's just do a clone stamp. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. It's not working, you're probably on the wrong layer. <laughs> okay, and if you go too far, it starts picking up the area that we were trying to get rid of, so let's undo that. And let's just go a little bit, let go, and then go again, and it'll be fine. Okay, and what else? This little corner. Let's just try with the clone stamp again. Uh, all right, oh, not too bad. Yeah, actually, it looks horrible. Actually. Let's just pull this other corner on. Right click, layer V to copy. V to go to your move tool. Let's move this over here. Right, edit. Oops, not free transform. Edit. Need to flip this horizontal. All right. And move it into place. There's looking pretty good. Add a layer mask. And get kind of big. There we go. There we go. All right. The larger your brush is, the more uh, feathering it will have. So sometimes it works better that way. Okay. I mean, it's not the perfect retouch job in the world, um, but we've done quite a bit right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and so now I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to put all of these into a folder. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to hold down shift and click on the last one. And then I'm going to hold down shift and click on the folder. And that'll put them all into this here uh, folder. You can name that. Oh. Okay, so from now, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, stamp visible. So that's command, the alt or option key, shift, and E. And it just created this layer here with all of the things I've done. So if I turned all those on, we still have that. And from here, we can actually do a little bit more retouching. I'm noticing some of these lines that once I zoomed out were a little bit more obvious. You could try doing a couple of these. Let's try this again. Okay, not too bad. So, um, I mean, like I said, it's not the perfect retouch, but we did get quite a bit done. Now that I have this one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of it, Command J, and then I'm going to make another copy of it, Command J. And why I'm doing that is, oops, let's see, is that we're not going to go, we already did all of this stuff here. So now we're doing the stamp visible, sharpening, and background blur. So what I want to do is on this layer, I'm going to turn this one off for a moment. 
This one here, I'm going to do um, another form of sharpening that I don't think we've talked about yet. So I'm actually going to go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. Now it has this really gray, weird gray look. What this does is it really brings out the edges and adds contrast to those edges to make it appear like it's sharper. I usually stick, depending on what it is, but for portraits I usually stick with about a two. All right, let's go ahead and hit OK. Okay, so now to make this look normal, uh, we need to change the blend mode. We're going to change it to overlay. So let's zoom in a bit here. And you can see that what the sharpening actually does. How much more sharper it looks. This is helpful for some things, but not for others. We just want some of the details sharpened. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask. I'm going to hit Command-I to invert it. So now nothing is showing. And now when I brush over with white, I'll be brushing over just the areas that I want sharp. So that's going to be things like the eye. And if you overbrush, like I don't want to get that skin stuff, you can hit X to switch to black quickly and go back over this. Okay. Let's get, also hit the lips. And for this portrait, that's really all I'm going to worry about. Everything else has a very soft look to it. So I'm going to leave the softness. I really just wanted to hit those eyes and those lips. And you can see really with the eyes how much of a difference it makes. It makes them really stand out. All right, so now that we've done that, Let's go to this next layer and let's turn it back on and we're going to use um, a blur filter on here. So let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we just want to blur it a bit. We don't want to take all the detail out. Let's just go with one pixel and hit OK. Alright, so now we can, and any areas we do want blurred will be blurred. Uh, but we need to make sure that we're adding our layer mask. And let's go ahead and invert. Well, no, we're going to leave most of it blurred, actually. So let's go ahead and leave it white. And I'm just going to go over this area here, painting with black where I don't want it blurred. I'm going to go with the front of her face and maybe just her dress, and then the background will be blurred. And some of those little specks that we missed uh, maybe aren't as a big of a deal now. And, I don't know, this stuff is really weird. Maybe we'll keep the blur on just on this. Here, just try not to hit the edges too much. So I'm not hitting the very edge of her nose or her lips or even down here. I'm trying to keep that stuff nice and sharp. Okay, if we want to see what we've done, here we are. We can clean up a little bit. weren't so bad. Alright, so everything that's not red is blurred. I'm going to go ahead and hit my backslash button again. Alright, so let's rename this real quick. We have sharpening. And blur. Alright. Yay! Finished. Time to take, uh, let's see, let's make sure that we have all your layers showing. If you have a group like this, that's fine. Open up your history panel. You can go ahead and click on the bottom here and drag down to make it larger. I don't need to see every single step. Whoops. 
going to need to see every single step, but um, this will work just fine. Go ahead and take your screenshot, and we're ready to turn in. Yay, five years later.